everyone, I'm Tasha, and I don't have any makeup on today. So today I'm doing the makeup and books tag, which has been going around YouTube for quite a while, for a few years. All of my friends have done the tag, except for me. I love makeup, I love books. However, there's a slight problem in the last like six months. I wear glasses full time. I've done my makeup a few times for you in the past. However, I've never done it while talking about books. So this is the tag and I will be talking about books that correlate with the steps of the makeup process. So first, this video has been kindly sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. So I am adding on an extra step to the makeup books tag and that is makeup books and glasses. Sometimes you have to do makeup for the glasses. Is this a tutorial? Maybe. For today's look, I'm going to be using these beautiful frames. This is Muse by Hilary Duff. These pretty like cat eye clear pink glasses. They are my favorite. They're my new favorite glasses and I'm so excited that GlassesUSA.com sent them to me. What is my favorite color? What is it? Okay, it's purple, but pink comes close. We are gonna be doing a lavender lip color with the pink sweater with kind of a gray pinkish eye to correlate with the whole pink look today. If you guys want to get your hands on a few frames from glassesusa.com, I have a special offer in the description box down below and you should totally check it out, especially if you're digging these frames because it's cool. It's so cool. I love them. The Hilary Duff collection is probably the coolest collection they have on the website right now. Hilary Duff has curated over 80 pairs of frames. These come in green and tortoise and she has so many fun different frames and they're so trendy and in style. They're also incredibly affordable. My Hilary Duff love has been reignited just because of the TV show Younger which is on TV land. It's such a fun show. It's all on Hulu. If you have Hulu, go watch it. In her glasses, she wanted to reflect the strong powerful women that she knows and she plays on TV. So that's what this line is for, is to empower all the women so that they feel fashionable and trendy and cool. And that's what I feel in these glasses. So thank you so much, Hillary. If you're not sure how some frames will look on your face, glassesusa.com does have a virtual mirror so you can upload your photo and you can see how some glasses will look. I have five new pairs of glasses. This is one. This is two. Look at these, these are round. Who thought round would look good on my face? Not me. Number three, very much like my dad's aviator glasses. And we have these 1950s style glasses, which I've worn to Disneyland and I feel very dapper and very Minnie Mouse like. And last, I have these very modern black to clear square frames and I feel very sophisticated in these glasses. So if you're wondering how you'll look in certain frames and the frames that I have in today's video, you can upload your face and check them out on your face. Since I have love and pears, I have glasses for every single outfit. Let's go into the makeup. So as you can see, these glasses, you can't see my eyebrows unless they sit a little bit farther down. When you're wearing glasses, you want to see where the frames hit on your eyes. On my face shape and where everything hits, most of my eyelid is visible. I can do a glittery look, I can do a dramatic look, and I will have to make my eyebrows a bit darker so that I don't look like I'm missing my eyebrows. Also, it's very important to figure out where the frames fit on your cheeks and if they're touching and they're touching my nose, so I use special products to make sure that my makeup does not wipe off during the day. Let's put the glasses away in the beautiful Hilary Duff case, and it also comes and a little sleeve thing. <laughs> Step one is primer. For primer, I use this Smashbox primer. This is photo finish with radiance and hydraulic acid. So it has a bit of a shimmer to it, which I kind of use by itself sometimes if I don't want to put on foundation. Pick a book that left a lasting impression on you. Probably The Hate You Give. I mean, if it didn't leave a lasting impression on the people who have read the book, then Maybe you need to read it again. I read The Hate You Give on a few of my flights in the fall. I couldn't put it down. The book is incredibly intense and it also taught me a lot about Black Lives Matter. If you haven't read The Hate You Give, I mean, it's been on the number one New York Times bestseller list for like 70 weeks over, no, not 70 weeks, has it? Like it's been on it for over a year. Wait, it came out in April, did it? Well, I'm excited for the movie. <laughs> Next step is 
foundation. I use a beauty blender and I use Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. I just got this in December and I'm still not sure if I like it. It's quite a lightweight foundation. For foundation, I do use my fingers to apply it and then I smooth it over with a beauty blender. I used to use brushes, but they're not hygienic really and I hate washing brushes. With a beauty blender, I literally wash it right before I do my face. And pro tip for anyone who ever cleans or tries to clean a beauty blender, use a bar of soap. Also, I hate this dropper thing and I just don't use it. So for foundation, the question that goes with it is favorite first book in a series. Some of my favorite books in a series are usually the first ones or if it's a fantasy novel, it's usually the second one. For this one, I have to go with the ultimate best first book in a series and that to me is Outlander. Natasha, you talk about Outlander a lot like okay I'm not kidding. Outlander can stand on its own. You literally do not need to read the second one. If you're just okay with Jamie and Claire's story in that first one, you're fine. You don't need to know the rest of the pain that they go through because it's a lot. If you're ever on the fence with Outlander and you're like oh, I don't need to read it, just read the first one. I know there's like 10 books in the series. You don't need to read the rest of them. Again, I'm smearing this on my face with my fingers because the beauty blender takes away there's my phone. All of the coverage. My skin is just super dry right now. I'm sure all of you know how to do this, but I have met some people who just use a beauty blender and just go like this. No, you're not allowed to use a beauty blender like that. You have to pat, 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 okay? That's how it works. If you want to smear, use a brush. Now the next step is not in the tag. I do some color correcting. It could be concealer because this is like a NYX concealer. I just put it on my dark circle right here and you do pats. Never smear, always pat. The orange of this concealer combats the blue in your dark circles. If I go without this, then I look tired. Next step is concealer. This is Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Sarah without an H told me to get it and I love it. So for concealer, it says pick characters you wish didn't exist. My dark circles, I wish they didn't exist. I was like trying to think of characters that I don't like and I think every character has a purpose. Most of them. Hold on, let me just put this around here like this. And I do this and then I do this. How I blend the concealer in. Fingers. I used to use a brush, now I just use my fingers because I like the intensity and I don't want to get rid of the intensity of the full coverage. A character that I would like to get rid of is <laughs> Christian Grey. He has no purpose. He is a horrible character. I don't care how romantic you think he is because he's not. He's a controlling psychopath. Now, Anna on the other hand, I do like that character. I think she's better than Bella. She definitely has more of a sense of humor. Now I go with the beauty blender and I just kind of make sure that there isn't any harsh lines or smears or smudges or anything. Step four is powder. Powder is very important, especially if you have like oily zones. I don't really have that many oily zones. My skin is rather dry, but I do like to powder and kind of bake around my eyes because you get creases. I'm using the one and only Stay Matte by Rimmel. This is my favorite powder and it's just, it's a hard powder, but I do like to get up a lot of it. And then I just do a little dot, 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 dot under here. So that way I just kind of get a lot and it soaks up all that moisture. We're gonna let this sit for two seconds. For this step, it's pick your favorite last book in a series. Now everyone goes with Clockwork Princess and I actually have it written down. It's the best finale I've ever read. Almost every finale I have read in the last two years, I'm constantly disappointed. Morningstar, A Court of war and ruin. They don't live up to the second book, so that's why I won't pick those. Even Winter by Marissa Meyer. Didn't live up to Cress. Cress was so good. Cress was the best book in that series. City of Heavenly Fire? That's an okay one. I actually prefer City of Glass. Some of my other series just haven't finished yet. So, Clockwork Princess it is. Let's wipe off the extra powder. It's important to powder your cheeks if you're doing contour, because that way the extra powder has something nice to lie on. Eyebrows, my favorite thing. I usually just use eyeshadow for my eyebrows, but I actually just got an eyebrow pencil, and this one is from LA Girl. It's in black. Typically don't use an eyebrow pencil because look at the color of my hair. 
it's almost black. I have to be so light-handed with a pencil, so that's why I do prefer a powder. It also has a spooly thing. So when I ever look back on pictures of me in the past, I never did my eyebrows because I thought they were already too dark, but they're not. When I remember in a panel and we get the question, what has changed the most since you started your YouTube channel? My answer is always my makeup. Also remember, eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Louise Penlin gave me that fun advice. Mine are not the same. This one is my favorite eyebrow. Yes, I have a favorite eyebrow. No, I have to go into powder because they're not even. Pick a book that you think everyone should read. And I just think this is hilarious because yes, everyone needs eyebrows. I never talked about the book that I think everyone should read. Let's rewind. Okay, so the book that I think everyone should read when it comes to eyebrows, that doesn't make sense, is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. If you guys haven't read The Host, you must. This step wasn't in very many of the makeup book steps. I am baffled. Why, why isn't contouring in the makeup and books tag? Doesn't everyone do contouring? Isn't this the age of the Kardashians? I made it my own question for this one for contour because this is such a big step in my makeup routine. I don't go without contouring. My palette that I use is broken, but this is the Makeup Revolution Iconic Lights Contour Pro. I got this at Ulta. I love this. And I just go in the crevice. So that way it adds some depth to my face. What book surprised you with how much depth it had in it? I picked one of my favorite books of all time, which is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. What I thought was just going to be a fun, you know, romantic Christian romance book turned into one of my favorite books of all time. I mean, it was one of those books that my mom had read and she's like, you should read this. And I'm like, eh. <sighs> It's so good. I would actually be really interested to see if someone who's not a Christian read it. Okay, and something else that I've added to my contouring routine is nose contour, which is my favorite thing to do. I have like a flattish nose, as you can see, it's quite rounded right here. I think it's cute. I like my nose. I still like to contour it, especially right here where the brow bone and the nose bone, whatever that bone is, hit. And so you just basically want to add the darker color in where you would get a shadow. So I like to add it right up here with the eyebrow up here and bring it down and then go right here. And this is the way I look like Miss Piggy. Up the nose and you want to make sure that the front part of your nose is devoid of any of the contour color. Light hits your face, right? So you want to make sure you highlight the highest planes on your face and that's this, that's this, and that's this. And anything that indents or comes in or goes this way, you wanna make sure you add the shadow. Some might think I learned how to contour on YouTube, and I did, but I actually learned how to contour from doing makeup and hair at my high school for drama club and for all the productions that I was involved in. I was actually head of hair and makeup department. Before I did YouTube, I did wanna become a cosmetologist. So now that we have these harsh lines, I like to take my powder brush and then just go over it. So the next step is eyeshadow, but before we get into eyeshadow, there's something I do before eyeshadow, which is prime my eyelids. I use Urban Decay. K eyeshadow primer potion. I just used a little bit. Now what's important about this, this is like glue for your eyeshadow. You're wondering where your eyeshadow goes throughout the day is because you just put it on your bare skin. You just kind of want to put it on top of your eyelid and you want to be gentle and I kind of go underneath too. I use this where my glasses fall on my nose. We have our glasses right here. So the little inner bit sits right here on the bridge of my nose. And this actually does prevent your glasses from falling down your face if you just put a little bit right here and it doesn't smudge the makeup that's on the side of your nose. You know you're gonna be wearing sunglasses that day. This is a good trick to use. I have some eyeshadows from ColourPop and I made this little palette. Pick a book with your favorite colors on it. I have to go with Confess by Colleen Hoover. I read this last year because the TV show came out. This is all white, but it has purple and pink and blue, and those are my favorite colors. So first, I'm just gonna be adding the gray color into the socket of my eye. I don't really have an eyelid. They're not the most ideal for doing eyeshadow because you really can't see any of the eyelid color. Okay, there we go, got some gray going. Now we're gonna add the dark purple, kind of a little bit under underneath it. Now I'm putting on that pink color right here on the center and it's gonna look so pretty with my pink glasses. And now I'm gonna go in with the blending brush with the purple shimmer and kind of blend that out there. So with another blending brush, I'm going to take the dark purple, put it on my lower lash line. Now it's time for eyeliner. For today's video, I'm gonna put on some cat eyeliner. I got this new eyeliner from NYX. Pick a dark and mysterious book. Hold off there on the book. 
this is not a felt tip liner. This is actually like little bristles. So we'll see how well I do with this. <laughs> Dark and Mysterious book. I really couldn't think of one. However, there is a fan fiction, which is my favorite fan fiction, that I just, I had to talk about. It's called Hunted by Bex Chan. If you guys are Jemini shippers, Draco and Hermione, then you'll love this. It's like one of my favorite fan fictions of all time. It's finished, it's completed, it's so good. It's my favorite fan fiction. For mascara, pick a long book. The longest book I've ever read, and it felt like an eternity was Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. It's the third book in the Outlander series. It's 900 pages long, and there's so much that happens in that book. Now we're coming to the last steps. I have blush and highlighter and lipstick. So the blush I use is this e.l.f. palette, and it has four different types of blush in it. We're just gonna go with the brightest pink. The question for this one is pick a book with a cringe-worthy romance. I have to go with one of my most recent reads, which is American Drifter by Chad Michael Murray. So when I was reading it, the woman in it was like a dream pixie. I don't know. I just know that it was cringy at first, but at the end it all makes sense. But it was still super cringy, but you have to read the end to understand why it's so cringe. Oh no, she's like a dream pixie girl. Is that how it's said? I don't know the saying. I hear it from friends and I try to repeat it and now I'm a poser. Highlighter! My favorite part of the whole makeup routine. Today I'm gonna be using the ColourPop highlighter in Hippo. Pick a book that brightens your day. Because highlighter does brighten my day. Because it's just like, well, bam. And that book for me is Can You Keep a Secret by Sophie Kinsella. Oh, I love that book. I just wanna reread it. It's just so cute and funny and it's, it's so good. The main character in it reminds me so much of Felicity from Arrow. I do put highlighter on the tip of my nose and I put it right here to you. I think it just looks so cute. Yes. Highlight. Yes. Now the last step is the lipstick. This is an LA Girl Matte Flat Finish Pigment Gloss. Um, it's basically a liquid lipstick. It's in the color Stunner. All right, here we go. We have the finished look. And don't forget about the special offer down below in the description box if you want to get your hands on a pair of glasses. These are so cute. I'm so happy with my look today. I love the purple and pink. Thank you so much to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video today. It's such a great site that just cuts out the middleman and you can get glasses for such an affordable price. It was so nice not to have to like do my makeup and then film a video, but like while filming a video. Oh, I forgot to put highlight in the corner of my eye. Now I feel better. I can't see. <sighs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm Natasha. I'll see you guys all in a new video. Keep calm and fangirl on. Bye! <laughs>